Welcome back to the Seven Deadly Sins Anime Review, episode number seventeen. Yeah, this one I'm viewing the sixty-third episode of the anime. I hate the whole cannot rest. Yep, that's the name of the. And this one adapts from chapters two twenty-six to two twenty-eight. And in case you're wondering, do they cut any pages to this one? The answer is no. They don't. They keep pretty much most everything in with the thumbs additions. Yes. So basically with this episode, this book right here, which they pretty much were adapting from, is almost completed. Yeah, they're mostly through this book. Yeah, with probably with next week's episode, they're probably going to finish this book. I'd say they finish this arc in probably two episodes, yes. Yeah, my guess is by the 13th episode of the season, which will be episode 65 of the series, that's probably when they're going to wrap up this particular arc. That's my personal guess, anyways. Episode starts up exactly where last week's episode left off. We have, basically, Milios, after he jumped up the Boris, has seen his brother, Zeteros, and he beats him up and destroys part of a bridge. And it turns out this Zeteros is not the real one. Nope, it's an illusion. And then, something kind of weird happens. A black mist surrounds Meliolus. Bond knows what this is. Is Malus Kana, one of the Ten Commandments, it's one of, it's her power. Yep, and she basically traps Meliolus in a cocoon. And they do a actually a visual change here. Yeah, first of several changes they make to this episode. Because in the entire manga itself, throughout this entire arc, so the three to have to stay adept. Meliskana is butt naked. In the anime, she's wearing her normal clothes. Yeah, it's one of three changes they make to this episode. Which, I don't have a real big problem with that at all. I mean, yes, she's a smoking hot woman. And I'm sure the writer, I'm sure the, the artist probably loved drawing her completely naked. But at least the anime basically gets a little more wider of an audience for an anime than, let's say, for a manga... To see a woman who's probably an adult, and seeing her butt naked probably not be good for general audience. So, put her clothes on. Yep. Also, she has this strange ability when she opens up her mouth. Apparently, not only her lips, but also like part of her skin like opens. Like, ah, uh, like this whole part of her face is like cut open. I'm like, wow, did she do that herself or is that her natural thing? Oh yeah, she also can twist her own tongue for some reason. Yeah, it's one of the most weirdest things about this character. Oh yeah, Meliolus spends the whole episode either talking to Meliskana or just looking at what's going on. Because right after this, despite the fact we had this battle going on between during the between Meliolus and the fake Zeteros, some of the pre basicals they were the and I think it was King of that he wanted the debris to go all over the place, so Merlin put up a shell, basically rendered the debris to some other place. Excuse me, they mentioned in last week's episode that this particular city is the site of a massacre that took place about a few hundred years prior to the, of the series. And they go in the city. Now they show the flat, they show the massacre, like, oh my gosh. Apparently... Hazabeth, the best friend to King, decided to possess somebody like almost exactly like Eskinar for some reason. Yeah, apparently it was misunderstanding. So he decided to pretty much massacre an entire city of a thousand people because of misunderstanding. Yeah. And most of the episode, it's most Ten Commandments, minus Meliodas, fighting a bunch of skeletons. Yeah, this happens almost the entire episode. At one point, even though they defeated mo mo most of them, like a couple points, like you have, let's see, you have, yeah, Escanor take off his special glasses, put him on Hawk, who keeps him on for pretty much the rest of the episode. The manga, it's like, okay, we just have where Escanor is automatically in his beefy form, and the glasses are actually already on Hawk. In the anime, they actually edited it in where he actually put it on him himself. Which, smart move on the part of Studio Dean for doing that. Because, who knows if the previous studio basically would have done that. I have no idea. So, 
And they pretty much destroy like a lot of these skeletons that keep reforming. And they form like a giant skeleton, which which actually does not happen long. That's completely original. And they defeat it. And then something also weird happens. They go inside Deanne for some reason, because she's like the only giant there. They possess her for a while. And Deanne basically beats up a bunch, be, uh, possessed Deanne, starts being at the Ten Commandments, thus the seven deadly sins. Escanor, a gentleman he is, probably wants to take down Deanne without seriously hurting her. He's like, he punches her in the gut because, like, he does not want to hit Lady in the face. Like, in the, in the anime, he says, I will not punch a Lady in the face. It's a slight wording change for the manga, but it's perfectly fine. I mean, it, he doesn't do much damage to her. All he does is basically just... When he hits her, apparently he just blows up part of her, her arm and it covers her belly. Yeah, it shows up her adamant, so she's like the rest of the episode. Also, they had this thing where she, when she's possessed, apparently she starts crying tears of blood. Yeah, this by far is never totally explained. And during during all this is going on, we have Elaine who gets out of bed. By the way, they actually change the color of her dress in the episode. In the manga, it's black. In the anime, it's pink. And then they also cut something else out here, which I do appreciate Studio for doing this. Like, you see, basically, someone catches her when she falls out of the bed, and she goes to help us, like, and you hear a voice. And viewer might know who this is, but thank God they didn't spoil it like the, like the manga probably did. Because this was a cliffhanger at the end. I believe it was like chapter 227, I think it was. Where she's somebody that she knows like, oh, it's you. They actually cut off the line, which I do pre I do give high praise for the anime for doing that. And then they go outside and they show outside. And they have basically Gothor basically invading Deanne's mind. And there's another visual change here. They show a lot more of her chest in the anime they do in the manga, which I was kind of surprised with that. It's like they, they show off like a lot of her chest. It's like her her top of her outfit basically is more open in the anime. Not fully, let's say fully topless for they show off her breasts, but showing a lot more skin than it did in the manga. Which I was kind of surprised about that. It's like, okay, we have one woman who's actually naked in the manga... Fully clothed in the anime, and yet in the, in the anime, one woman who actually was not naked is showing a lot more skin. I'm not really sure why I did this for. It's, it's it's fine. I have no really problem with it. And apparently, despite the fact Gotha tries to free the end of possession, doesn't really work. And then we have it where she takes her hammer, and I'm glad they cut this particular moment out of the anime because that would have been disgusting to see. Because in the manga, they, they, they show us the manga, basically you see Deanne take her hammer and kind of poke her head with, and you actually, in the manga they show us in detail, in the anime, they actually cut this out, which, good job Studio D, that was a good move on your part, do not show that, that would have been disgusting, a woman maiming herself like that. That would have been absolutely disgusting to see. Which, it's kind of similar to what they did with Deanne back during the previous arc. Where they actually trimmed down basically her beating at the hand of Droll. Which, in the manga, she was beaten to a bloody pulp. In the anime, it's like a few bruises. Which, that change was fine because we don't need to see a fully grown woman getting, her, getting, her, ha getting beat up like that. That, was, that would have been absolutely inappropriate for a general audience to see. Here... This is another good change they did. Basically, just cut out the tiny little moment of the part of her hammer goes into her side and into her temple, which, like I said, high praise for the anime for doing that. And then, then we hear, let there be light, and all, all the souls get released, and the person was Elizabeth, and both her eyes are golden now. Yep, this is actually explained a little bit later what this is. And we see Elaine staring next to her, and that's where the episode ends. <coughs> I gotta say that the anime did a really good job. Oh yeah, and also, before I get my final thoughts on the episode, that they do kind of do a slight word change, basically, where, like, <laughs> Metmelios basically is commenting on Metmelios Ma Ma face, which is a similar comment, but they changed one word, but mostly it's the same. Mm-hmm. 
all in all, this was a really damn good episode. High praise Studio Dean basically for a very good adaptation of these three chapters. The changes were perfectly fine. I personally didn't have a problem with it. I don't think people who are fans of the manga would have a problem with the changes. No, as long as you keep a lot of the stuff in for the manga, the good meat of it there, it's perfectly fine. All in all, basically, as of this episode, this arc has only got about five chapters left. And with them adapting like three chapters an episode, and this is my personal guess, that this episode, this arc will finish with episode 65. Basically the 13th episode of the season. That's probably when they're going to wrap up this arc and probably move into Prelude to New Holy War, which that's probably we're going to end the season with, with that particular arc. Yes, which probably having season four of the show, probably have the entire thing made up of the New Holy War story and then eventually Demon King arc. Yeah, that's my personal guess. Yep. Now, normally, I would basically discuss, like, because I finished talking about the anime, news of the anime, like, what did I talk about new chapter manga? The answer is no. The new chapter has been released, but there has been no English translation of it. I haven't personally found any at all, which is kind of weird. Like, I saw one site, it's there, but it's in Japanese. I don't want to read Japanese because I don't speak the language, and I have no idea what the heck they're saying. Like, if I want to read manga, I like to read in my own language, which is English. <laughs> nothing against people who speak Japanese. I have nothing against your language at all. It's just I don't speak it, so I have no desire to read it. Read, read, read it anyways. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm hoping that in the next couple of days it gets fully translated English. I hope so, because I thought it was kind of weird, though, they didn't translate English. Because normally, by, because normally they released the new chapter on Tuesday... And I look up, basically, I'm checking. Apparently, the chapter is still not released in English yet, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it's like that for several series, basically, I've been reading. Yeah, not only this series, uh, Black Clover and My Hero Academia. Now, in the case of those two, I think Black Clover and My Hero Academia, I think it's those who release tomorrow. So, I'm going to do a review of My Hero Academia, the, spe the chapter for the manga tomorrow. Black Clover, I'll save for Tuesday. Yep. Which along with newest episode of the anime. Unknown if they're going to air new episode of Seven Deadly Sins on Christmas Day. I have no idea. They're probably not. Oh, they, they probably would kind of weird. Like, yeah, it's kind of interesting though that last they kind of did the same thing where they aired a new episode of Tokyo Ghoul on Christmas Day. And this year it's new episode of Seven Deadly Sins. Well, Tokyo Re, anyways. Yeah, the series has since ended. It actually ended a few months ago. After just 24 episodes. Though they at least split up in two seasons. Now, I still think that Studio Parrot really rushed through this manga. Yeah, they rushed through it. Like, oh my gosh, they rushed it. Yep. So, yeah, that's it for the particular review. I'm hoping to do one more review tonight. If not, I'll probably save for it tomorrow. I'll be reviewing news episode Fire Force. Yep. Which I think I'll watch it next, and I'll put this video up along with the other one, okay? Please, next view. Bye.